Bye. You guys ready? Hold on, it's uh, booting up the YouTube stream. Okay. And broadcast. All right, you are all set to go, Lisa. Okay, let's go. So my name is Lisa Shanahan and I am the chairman of the Common Council Ordinance Committee. We're having a special meeting and public hearing tonight. Um, it's 6.30. Two. So we're starting the meeting now. Um, this meeting was originally scheduled for March 17th. We needed to move it forward due to the coronavirus. We had to cancel our March 17th meeting. So this meeting has been properly, um, legally properly noticed by um, Brian. Thank you very much. I wanna read a couple little notes that um, have to do with the Governor Lamont's executive with regard to these types of meetings. The public must have the ability to view and listen to each meeting or proceeding in real time by telephone, video, and other technology. That is happening right now. Any such meeting or proceeding is recorded and will be posted on our website within seven days. That also will happen. The required notice and agenda for each meeting is posted on the agency website and shall include all the information about how the meeting will be conducted and how the public can access it. That also has been done. And all speakers taking part in this meeting or proceeding Please clearly state your name and your title if you have one before you speak on each occasion that you speak so that the note taker knows who is speaking. So thank you very much for joining us. At this time, I'm gonna um, make a roll call and I think that I'll just call out each person's name and please just state that you're here so that we can also record that with our note taker. Um, again, I'm Lisa Shanahan, I'm the chair. And David Hubelman. Present. Are you here? Dominique Johnson. Present. Tom Keegan? Here. Here. And Manny Langello? Present. And Tom Livingston? Here. And Kadeem Roberts? Present. Great. So we have a um, full committee and therefore a quorum. In addition, I'd like to recognize that Greg Burnett, who is also a Common Council member, has joined us. Leisha King has joined us. And then we have Anthony Carr, Nick Roberts, and Jessica Palladino. Have I missed? Oh, and Brian, of course, our um, staff person, Brian Candela, is also with us. Anybody that I can't see on my screen that I have missed? OK, so we are all here together. What we're going to do today is we have a public hearing of three different chapters. Chapter 94 of the city code has with the DPW and um, disposal passes for the use of transfer stations. Chapter 74, Article 1, is uh, with regard to parks and recs. This has to do with parking at peaches and at parks. And Section 95-38 and 39 has to do with the naming of city streets in the honor of individuals who have contributed to Norwalk. We're going to go in the order um, that I just listed each of those statutes. And what we will do is I will list um, the names of the different sections. Then I will go to Brian for any email comments and we'll see whether or not there's any public comment on any one of these sections. Does anybody have any thoughts about this, the way I'm proceeding? If it's all okay, thumbs up, I'm moving forward. Okay, great. So the first section that we'll have the public hearing on will be chapter 94 of this code. Section 94-18, disposal pass for residents and real property owners who pay vehicle tax to Norwalk. Section 94-19, admission for residents and real property owners who do not pay vehicle tax to Norwalk. Section 94-20, passes and permits. Section 94-21, admission for non-residents and non-permit holders. Brian, can you read um, any emails that you might have gotten as public comments for this section? Sure, the only other addition I'd make, Lisa, is that there's also uh, a vote on the name change to chapter 94. I but should have read that. Absent that, um, there are there were no uh, written comments or uh, messages that I received um, concerning Chapter 94 and any of the, the title and, or any of the sections that you just listed. Great. And are there any public that are um, on the call right now that would like to make any comments with regard to these the name change in these sections? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next statute or ordinance, which is um, we're going to have an ordinance name change to chapter 74, article one of the city code. Section 74-1, free admission for residents and real property owners who pay vehicle tax to Norwalk. 
Section 74-2, admission for residents and mural property owners who do not pay vehicle tax to Norwalk. Section 74-3, season sticker for residents and property owners of certain towns. Section 74-4, parking fees. Section 74-5, and parking. And again, um, Brian, do we have any comments, public comments that have been emailed to you? Yes, there were uh, two emails that were sent by uh, the same resident, uh, Carol Salvato, um, and I'll read them in the order in which she sent them. Uh, this one was from uh, yesterday. Uh, city employees are paid wages and as part of their job description to act as first responders. They pay no money to support the city. They can get a pass for $100 and I as a tax and I, I think as a taxpayer for 60 plus years, have to pay $325. Most people don't know about the proposed fees. I speak and know many citizens of Norwalk through my various endeavors. I relate to them the situation I am faced with and how non-resident city employees are favored over me, a taxpayer. They are incredulous. These rates were published in the Norwalk Hour once to my knowledge, and I have not seen them published anywhere else. Many people do not get the local paper and do not know the rates are being raised on parks, et cetera. They don't know how to access- Brian Frozen. What's that? They don't know how to access city government in any way. All of these past years, I have received a resident pass at no cost. Now I'm told the beach pass is free, but $325 is for parking. How can I access the beach without parking? Attorney Brian Kendall is being CC'd on this thread and I wish him to read this into the public record. All the information is on this email. I cannot attend the meeting and I'm not good with technology. So this is the information that I want read into the record. Uh, this was also uh, sent over to uh, Rianne Bromark who is uh, uh, transcribing this so she has it. Um, and then her second email was, I would like to advocate that non-residents who own and pay taxes on Norwalk properties be given a resident beach pass as has always been up to now with no fee attached. I own two middle-class properties now in Norwalk and have paid taxes for 60 plus years on properties to Norwalk that supported the infrastructure, common good and beach and parks. I use the resident pass to attend concerts and nonprofit events with friends and my Norwalk family members. I was born and educated in Norwalk. Moved to Wilton 52 years ago because of growing family and could not afford Norwalk properties. The price structure of the two towns has since reversed. The recommended rate schedule from Parks and Rec would have me pay 325 to attend these concerts, etc. My deceased husband and I both had our business in Norwalk and volunteered innumerable hours at nonprofit events for many, many years, as can be attested to by Mayor Harry Rowling. I am well into my senior years and am saddened to see the town that I have supported has little regard for my longtime support, especially since any non-resident of Norwalk that works for the city can have a resident pass for $100. Please keep the system in place for non-resident property taxpayers to receive a resident pass at no cost. How many of us that can there be? Um, and that, those are the two emails. Okay, great. Are there any citizens on this line that would like to make any further public comment at this time with regard to chapter 74, article one, and other sections? Hearing, move on to section 95 and 95 39. This is with regard to the naming of the city streets. And, um, I guess it, I should read it out again, 95-38 policy and considerations and 95-39 is procedure. And I think we have one comment on that as well, right, Brian? That is correct. Uh, yes, uh, Rich Bonifant, um, 17 Park Hill Avenue, Norwalk. Uh, he addressed this to the Norwalk Common Council and also to the ordinance committee. Uh, I would request that you make no changes to chapter 95 regarding the criteria for commemorative naming of a street specifically altering the requirement that if named after a deceased person, a period of one year must pass before a street or roadway can be named after the individual. At the last ordinance meeting, some of you remarked it was a loophole or an inconsistency that a living individual could have a street named in their honor, but a naming after a deceased individual had a period of a year before the designation could occur. This wasn't an oversight when the ordinance was written. It was by design and agreed to by all members of the Common Council in a bipartisan effort. The general agreement was that a street naming should not be based on a motion after someone passed, but rather established on merit after the community sorrow had subsided. 
Conversely, the naming after a living person was also the subject of much discussion, and it was understood that if a person had served with distinction in the community and they were of little threat to subsequently embarrass the city, then it would be a meaningful gesture to let them enjoy the honor and commemor commemoration. This wasn't about emotion, but rather a way to express the application for all the contributions and dedication the person gave to society. Please don't move the goalposts to make it easier to name a street or roadway by changing the ordinance for one individual. All this will do is create a large number of requests from family and friends to honor individuals immediately after their death. Thank you, Rich Bonifant. Okay, great. And is there any public on this line would like to make a comment about this uh, ordinance change at this time? Someone from the public, if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand uh, electronically now. I see none. I see none. Okay, so hearing none, I'm going to now close the public hearing and I'm going to open the public hearing discussion among the committee members. And I think what we'll do is we'll just start with section 94. And then Brian, if you'd be so kind, there were some comments that different committee members had called in and we um, do have a couple of changes that people have the statute in front of them that we'd like to share with everybody at this time. Can you go through that, Brian, and also maybe sure. give some of the rationale for what we've sure. done? Sure. So um, since the last meeting, um, these changes were proposed uh, simply to try and clean up the ordinance and make it sound better. It doesn't change uh, what the ordinance stands for or what it does. Uh, so for example, um, you'll see uh, in the title, it says transfer site, but that's not the name. The name is actually transfer station. So in the title, it should read use of transfer station as opposed to site. So the only change there was to correctly name it as a transfer station instead of a site. Um, and then there's also a similar change in 9421, which is the last section where it was improperly identified as a transfer site. And so it was trained, changed to transfer station. So that was the first change. Again, it doesn't do anything to change the ordinance at all, except correctly identify the transfer station. In 9418, um, there was a change in the language, there was a change, a proposed change in the language to make it sound better. Uh, specifically, um, the sentence read, all non-commercial cars, SUVs, and or minivans of Norwalk residents and or real property owners paying vehicle tax to Norwalk, and then it continues on. The proposed change to make it sound better is, all non-commercial cars, SUVs, and or minivans of Norwalk residents and or real property owners, which is exactly the same as it was, for which a vehicle tax is paid. So again, there's a change in the, in the, in the words, but it says the exact same thing. And so that was one of the changes uh, to try and make 9418 sound a little bit better than what it otherwise uh, did. Um, okay. If you can just hold on there for one second, Brian. Tom, I think, has a comment about that. Yeah, yeah this is Tom Livingston for the record. Uh, actually, it's more than just a, a um, just to make the language better. What it was intended to do is to provide that only cars for which a tax has been paid are qualified for this. So somebody can have a three cars but pay tax on one. The way it was written before could be interpreted that all of those cars are subject are, are free. And what this does is it means it only applies to the cars for which taxes are paid. Thank you for that clarification. Um, the only other uh, the only other um, change was uh, 45 with a dash instead of just four, 40 and five. There's 45 and in between that there's a, a hyphen between the two of them. So that was the only other change to 9418. Great. Moving to um, 9419, there's a same change, correct? 9419, it's the exact same change as in 9418 for which a vehicle tax is paid. That was the recommended change again, again following uh, Tom's uh, rationale. Um, 9420, there's a little bit more of a change, and this was to um, clarify the difference between the disposal permit and the additional permit that would be necessary um, for uh, different types of uh, vehicles coming to the transfer station. Um, so let me identify what those changes are. So originally the title was passes and permits. And in order to uh, differentiate between a disposal pass and this additional permit, 
the recommended change would be additional permits for 9420 instead of passes and permits. Um, the only changes to 9420, again, was to change from, initially it said a disposal pass, which would be very difficult to differentiate between the disposal pass that's discussed in 9418 and 9419. So in 9420, we switched it to an additional disposal permit to differentiate between the two because there is a difference and Jessica or Anthony could answer those questions as to why. Um, and then if you take a look at the end of 9420A, um, at the end of it, the, the one that's in the ordinance ends with disposal pass period, there would be an extension, and instead of it being a period, there'd be a comma, as provided in sections 9418 and 9419 in order to apply for the additional disposal permit, meaning you need to have a valid disposal pass in order to get this additional permit. Um, and again, Jessica or Anthony could answer questions as to why, but the, the rationale behind these changes was so that there wouldn't be any confusion between the disposal pass and the, this other thing, which we identified as an additional permit, uh, an additional disposal permit. So those were the recommended okay. changes there. Um, in 9421, um, I capitalized yard waste site as we, as we did with transfer station throughout. Um, and then in the first line, uh, Tom correctly pointed out that, uh, the title says non real, non real property owners, but in the actual language of the ordinance, we only had real property owners. So in order to make it, uh, consistent with the title, I recommend that we add in non real property owners, which is after. So it says all vehicles of non-residents, non-permit holders, and or non-real property owners. So again, just to be consistent uh, with the with the title itself. Those are the changes. Um, and again, in order to either um, clarify uh, something so that there isn't confusion uh, to make, as Tom indicated in 94, 18 or 19, to make, to make it so that there isn't a loophole for people with the uh, being able to get in multiple cars uh, with only having to pay tax on one. And then the other things were simply uh, to um, to clarify either written mistakes or omissions that would make it consistent with the with this ordinance itself. Great, Jessica, were you trying to raise your hand to uh, make a comment? I saw you raise your hand at one time. You're muted, Jessica. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no worries. This is Jessica Palladino. Um, I, no, I think I was just moving around a little. Oh, okay, good. Just, I thought you were trying to get our attention. Dave, Dave raised Okay, hand. David, it looks as though, do you have a question, David? If you could unmute. Uh, just what, a quick question uh, is that- Please identify, so this is David uh, This Hovelman is David Duvelman. Um, the question I have is, is the pass, the pass will then be linked to that specific vehicle, correct? Okay. This is just- so Someone yes. with the pass, can't roll in with their other car if they have one pass. Correct. The okay. this is Jessica Palladino. The staff at both facilities check the license plate on the vehicle and the license plate that's on the pass to verify that it is the correct pass for that vehicle. Great. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Does anybody else want to be recognized with questions or comments with regard to this statute? Pretty clear. So at this time, I would um, entertain a motion to move this to Common Council for consideration. Does somebody want to make that motion? David's made the motion. Can Any I ask further discussion? Oh yes. Before you do that, Brian. Yes. In the first two sections, we had talked about changing the language to all non-commercial vehicles. Did that change get recognized just now? So there was. Hold on one second. I have to find it. So the language at the end of the last meeting. Uh, for uh, the ordinance committee, which was in February, had all non-commercial cars, SUVs, and or minivans of Norwalk residents. Um, so right now, that's the language for both 94.18 and 94.19. Uh, but the, uh, obviously, the committee could discuss that if they would like. So, Jessica, what we, are you concerned that's not being um, picked up by those types of, um, by the language that it is now? By it not saying all vehicles, not all non-commercial vehicles, you're excluding the pickup trucks and, and vans and vehicles with trailers that you want to also get this disposal pass. So in order to encompass everything, 
you'd like the first two sections, section 18 and section 19, to say all non-commercial vehicles. So you're suggesting that we strike cars, SUVs, and or minivans and just vehicles? And correct. And say okay. all non-commercial vehicles of Norwalk residents and or real property owners. I think that, that I'm okay with that. Does anybody have any other comments with um, Anthony seems to like it with a thumbs up. Any other questions or comments on this language with regard to the committee from the committee? Actually, and that actually um, is for you said trailers as well, correct? So vehicles with trailers are required to get the secondary pass that we spell out in section 20. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do, Brian, I guess, would be on, on 9418 and 9419, we'll strike cars, SUVs, and or minivans, place it with the word vehicles. Okay. okay. I can make that change if that's what the committee would like. Great. So are we ready with, did, with some, so David, move, wait, Tom, do you want to be heard? Yeah, I'm, I don't want to, I just want to understand this a little better because, okay, so if I have a pickup uh, and if we take the chain, I get the pass, right? But I get free use of the disposal pass, right? And, and what we're saying down in 20 is, I need a separate, but then I need a separate pass for if, if I have a pickup. I'm, I'm just, I'm confused because this, we talked about this a little bit because what we're saying, if we change that to vehicles, it means I can have a pickup truck and I get in for free and I go down to 20 and I have a pickup truck and it says I need, I need to get this oh, yeah. pass. Two different passes. So to Anthony, can you be heard? But why, why, is it, why is it two passes? Yeah. I mean, if, if we're, I mean, I thought I, when we looked at this, I thought it's it was two separate passes and that's why we kept the way it was because it's a separate pass you need if you are a, a non-commercial pickup truck, van or vehicle. And this is, this was clear this way. If we make it visible, okay. Bob, I think it confuses it. I agree, uh, actually. Tom, um, the, um, and Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the second pass, it, it's really a card and we had circulated that at the public works committee meeting. So you're going to get your disposal pass, which will be an eight and a half by 11 sheet landscape. It'll have the public works logo on it. It's going to say disposal pass, uh, excuse me, for the transfer station and yard debris site. But to get, so that's the disposal pass, right? That's, that's, that, that's the disposal pass. You, you, if you have a pickup truck, a truck with a trailer, um, et cetera, those types of vehicles, you need to get a second card. And that, that card is what, that additional disposal permit is. Yeah, but I understand those, that, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But it's oh, confusing those, to move from 18 to 20. How do yeah, you, what's the why, difference? I'm sorry, listen. I, don't, I think it's confusing uh, to make that change. Because right now it says, I mean, the gist of it is if you're a, a non-commercial pickup truck or van or vehicle, you have to get the special car, right? Uh, which you have to you can only get if you have this other pass from 98, 8, And so I don't know what that chain does other than confuse me. And I, maybe it's just me, I'm sorry. Anthony, can I speak? Yeah, and the only thing I was gonna add though, the only thing I was gonna add, Tom, was that that um, the pickup trucks and those trucks with trailers and, and, and the larger vans, they're weighed on, on the scale, right? So their they're input, they're, their weights each time that you go, they're 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 documented on on, um, on a system called Desert Micro. So no, I outcome. understand that. All right. Okay, J Jessica, can you explain a little clearer? Sure. So Tom, this is Jessica Palladino. Tom, the the point of it is, all vehicles should have to get the disposal pass, that first pass that we're talking about in Section 18, um, and whether or not they're real property owners or um, residents that pay the vehicle tax will depend on whether or not they have to pay the $100 for that pass. After that pass, if you have a pickup truck, van, or a vehicle with trailer, you then have to go to the transfer station and get a card for your vehicle. With that card comes the one ton free. If every single vehicle, all non-commercial vehicles, don't first get the disposal pass, then out of or non-registered in Norwalk vehicles 
that our pickup trucks, vans, and trailers would get that one ton free still. They wouldn't be paying that hundred dollars. Though if we don't change the first two sections to all non-commercial vehicles. I think she's right about that, Tom. As I read it, as I get closer to it, because they still have to get that first pass in order to get the second pass. So I think it's correct right. to say all vehicles, actually. Because then you get down to the second place and they're they're already having to get that first pass before they right. can get Right, and the that's permit. the intention of, Lisa, that is the intention of the, the ordinance, is to go in that succinct order so that you first get the disposal pass, no matter what kind of non-commercial vehicle you are. Okay. Then, yeah. if you're a pickup truck I'm... or trailer, you have to get that second card. All right. I, I, I think I, that's I, correct. I see what you're saying. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think we're good with that. So, Brian, back to you. I do believe that what we should do is strike cars, SUVs, and or minivans for the word vehicles in both 18 and 19. And then I sure. think it's correct. All right, this is Brian uh, for Assistant Corporation Lisa Council. wants to be heard too. Yeah, um, I, I would just I would just say that the, the the way that the way that this is structured is that it's like a funnel. Everyone has to get the disposal pass, and then if you're a certain type of vehicle, then you have to go get that additional permit. So it kind of funnels everyone through. Everyone's got to get the initial pass, and it funnels through. That's kind of what okay. I was going to say. Alicia's the thing that can clarify it is the initial pass is an entry pass to get in. Right, so we need our employees to be able to check your pass with your license plate. So it's really the first one is a entry pass, the second one is a disposal pass for pickup trucks, vans, and vehicles with trailers. Yeah, we're comfortable with that. We got it. Okay, and David, you want to be heard? You're still um, muted. The, yeah, the, there you go. Yeah, I unmuted. Sorry, this is David Huvelman. Um, the the though I have to sort of what tells a person who has the pass but has a pickup truck that they need an additional they get yes that yes is this is your entry now you need a permit in yeah, that first section. is there something that distinguishes that this it's, is jessica in, paladino 18 19. yes david yes on top of the disposal pass it will say that it will say additional permits are required for pickup trucks vans and vehicles with trailers so the physical pass will have that on it. Correct. Great. Okay, thank you. That's great. Jessica, are these Kadeem, the pass do you want to be heard? Yeah, are these the passes that you showed um, the last meeting like a couple months ago? All right, cool. Correct. Correct. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're, um, I'm going to try to move a little quickly because we're getting to seven o'clock. So um, we do have the motion on the floor. Motion. Can I take a roll call? The I motion to move, the motion to move 94, um, and 94, the name change, 94, 18, 19, 20, and 21 to Common Council for a vote. As so amended, can I right? take the roll call now? I'm sorry, okay. as amended, as we've spoken, right. Um, so I'll start with um, David Hovelman. Aye. Dominic Johnson. Aye. Tom Keegan. Yes. Manny Langella. Yes. Tom Livingston. Yes. Kadeem Roberts. Aye. And I, Lisa Shanahan, vote yes as well. So it, this motion passes unanimously and we'll move on to our next um, chapter, which is chapter 74. This is a name change for article one. And then we have section 74, 74-1, 74-2, 74-3, 74-4, 74 74-5. And we have a small change in this as well um, that has been called in by council members. Brian, do you want to share the changes on that from what people are reading on their agenda? Sure. This is Brian Candela, Assistant Corporation Counsel. Um, so in 74-1, the only changes, the only difference between the ordinance now, what's being recommended as opposed to at the last meeting in February is... Um, Number in 74.1, a change to the title, instead of free admission, free vehicle admission for residents, uh, instead of just free admission. Um, and then in 74.1, subsection A, it's identical to the language that we used in uh, the previous sections in 94.18 and 94.19, uh, where you see uh, on the end of the first line, for which a vehicle tax is paid to Norwalk. Um, so those are the recommended changes in section 74-1. 
Um, in section 74 2, uh, again, the change in the title is vehicle admission, and then it goes on as opposed to just admission because we're admitting the vehicle. Um, and then again, in the body of 74 2, the only change is similar to what I just read for which a vehicle tax is paid to a city, and then it goes on other than Norwalk. Um, those are the only changes, um, and it's for similar reasons that were. Uh, cited to uh, when we were discussing 94.18 and 94.19. Great. And is there any, um, before we ask for a motion to move it, is there any discussion among committee members about this, these changes or this section in general? Any questions or concerns for, um, in this case, Nick? Hearing none, can I have a motion to move this to Common Council for consideration? Tom Livingston's um, moved it. Kadeem Roberts is seconded. So um, I guess I'll just take the roll call if we're ready to go. And I'll start with David Hubelman. Aye. Dominique Johnson. Aye. Tom Keegan. Yes. Uh, Manny. Yes. Tom Livingston. Yes. Kadeem Roberts. Aye. And I also vote yes. So we have a unit um, vote on that as well. So the final statute that we're going to consider or ordinance we're going to consider this evening is section 9538 policies and considerations and the 95-39 procedure. There are no changes if I'm correct about that, Brian, right? From what we um, gave everybody on their notice and on their agenda. Yeah, so this is uh, again, Brian Candell, Assistant Corporation Counsel. Um, there, uh, after reviewing the language that we had uh, uh, looked at following the February 2020 Ordinance Committee meeting, uh, there were no uh, recommended language changes to either 9538 or 9539. So what um, you and everyone else would see on the agenda, uh, which is highlighted uh, in red ink, um, which is basically, or a person who has been deceased less than one year um, that is in both 9538 towards the bottom of the ordinance and then in 9539 subsection C on the second and third lines of, sec of 9539C. And again, those are that is the language that had been uh, discussed at the February 2020 uh, meeting as well. Great. In consideration, just to kind of give a little bit of background to everybody, the thought was is that um, while individuals who are alive, who are perhaps having a name named after them can at some point perhaps embarrass the city. People who are no longer with us probably are out of options for embarrassing us post-mortem. So the idea was that with the super majority of the common council, um, somebody could be honored in, in this way under a year after their death. So again, any discussion among the committee members to move forward on, on this item? Hearing none. Oh, Tom, Tom would like to be heard. Yeah, hi, Lisa. Thank you. I just we've we've not changed this at all. Is that correct? Other than other than uh, no. Correct. The only change that we've made is allowing um, someone who has been dead for less than a year to be honored with the supermajority of the Common Council vote. OK, thank you. Great. So do I have a motion to move this forward to the Common Council? David Hubelman has made that motion. Um, and I guess I'll take a roll call vote on that as well. So David, would you, Aye. and Dominique? Yes. Uh, Tom Keegan? Yes. Manny? Yes. Tom Livingston? I think you said yes, is that right? You're out. Yes. <laughs> um, Kadeem Roberts? Yes. And I too am voting yes. So that also has been passed unanimously. All right, great. So we have um, moved that forward. And Brian, if you need to, well, I probably still need you. So you can't go yet. We'll try to go quickly through the rest of what we have. Um, so much so, that there's, we're ready we to one, move to public comment, right? So we right, have one yeah. public yeah. comment that you'd like to share. Again, this is Brian Candela, Assistant Corporation Counsel. Uh, there was one public, there was one comment that was emailed to me uh, by a Diane Loricella concerning um, the uh, Norwalk Facilities Construction Committee. Uh, she indicated, Brian, I could not register to take part because Zoom ID number was not a hyperlink and could not be copied because the agenda was a PDF and I don't own a word conversion software. Um, 
just for the record, um, the link on the agenda can also be typed into a web browser um, if you can't cut and paste it. Uh, but then she indicated, please include the following comments for the record uh, to Lisa Shanahan, chair of the ordinance committee, council member and staff, council members and staff. I hope this email finds you and your family safe and well. Thank you for your work and dedication during this stressful time. I noted in the agenda that the discussion item about the facilities construction committee includes the possibility of a vote. I ask that you consider not abolishing this committee and instead consider holding meetings on a different day of the month so that fuller detailed discussions can occur related to a harmonization of across the board standards for renewable energy implementation, energy efficiency and employment of green infrastructure in every building and renovation projects. In addition, I ask that before voting about whether to abolish the NFCC, please speak to former Mayor Alex Knopp. He created this committee in order to relieve the Council of Detail, Study, and Review of Construction Plans, utilizing community construction professionals in addition to Council and staff. If the current committee has become burdensome, consider a different structure, format, and meeting dates so that additional attention can be paid to things I mentioned in the previous paragraph, as well as a fresh approach for public buildings, design, renovation and construction. Sincerely, Diane Loricella, and she provides her uh, contact telephone number. Okay, great. Um, are there any other citizens on the line who would like to make a public comment at this time? Hearing none, I'll close public comment and move to acceptance of minutes. I do have a couple of comments on the minutes and then um, if anybody else has them, please raise your hand and we can put them through. Um, under section number one for roll call, it's um, my name, Ms. Shanahan, who called the meeting to order at 707 on the February 18th meeting. And then the other changes I had to make were, um, I think that is confusing because we have Kadeem Roberts on our committee. And then there's also Nick Roberts who comes um, from time to time to our committees to make comments. So I'd like to, um, under the new business section seven and the discussion and vote refer to Mr. Nick Roberts as the person making the comments, just so that that's all clear. And I thought Thank I had you. one more, any one more thing, did I? Oh, and the last thing I have also on page three, the very first sentence that we've said it would be just under 10,000. I'd like to add the dollar sign to that or $10,000 for his travel. Does anybody else wanna raise their hand with comments? Tom Keegan has some comments. Yeah, would the um, reflect that I was in attendance? My name's not up there. That's right. Please, Tom Keegan. He was there. Um, anything else I'm on used the to minutes? It. <laughs> we enjoyed having you there. How are you being there? Um, anything um, else this, on? This, this is Brian Candell. Where where was the yeah. uh, Nick? Where was the thing about Nick Roberts as opposed to Kadeem? So it's under um, number seven, new business. And when we had the discussion about section 74, I believe it were all, those were all Nick Roberts comments. And Nick, if I'm wrong, speak up. But I just thought it was confusing to have both Kadeem and Nick and not have Nick's name as the uh, making these points about right. the fees. I, I, will, I will ask uh, that um, Barbara from my office insert uh, Nick in front of, uh, instead of in between Mr. and Roberts every time it shows up in seven, in. Uh, on page three. That'd be great. And as I say, we may consider that for today's meeting too, if there's anything that Nick has said. And I see David's hand is raised too. So anything else, um, Brian, before under, I move to David? Under new business, under um, uh, where it says, Mr. Huvelman moved this item, uh, please correct the spelling of my name to H-E-U-V-E-L-M-A-N. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Tom, looks, Tom Livingston? Yes, just on page two, the last sentence under, well, the, the full paragraph in the last sentence is in addition to the time he came, in addition to the times he came to Norwalk, Mr. Candela said three or more times dwelling was on the conference calls. I'd like to change that slightly. It sounds like Brian was sort of yelling, was saying this three times he told us to say, Mr. Candela said swirling was on three more conference calls for three or more hours. It sounds like he's berating us. <laughs> and Brian wouldn't be <laughs> Did you catch that, Brian? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Candela uh, said uh, Mr. Zwirling uh, was, was on three or more conference calls for three or more hours. Yes, thank you. Yep. Gotcha. Anything else on the minutes? Oh, Dominique has something too. <laughs> I know. Uh, I see that there's a disembodied it. name in attendance that says Todd. So somehow Todd made it, but you didn't, Tom. Perhaps that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. That's probably you, Todd. <laughs> and uh, right. I also under for public comment um, on the second line, it appears as though Diane Laura Cella's last name is misspelled. Yes, it is. I circled that too. Great. Good. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for, I missed my little note there. Great. Anything, anybody else with um, comments? So could, does anybody, will somebody please move that we accept the minutes as amended? Tom does. Okay. And then I'll take a quick roll call on the minutes. Say Tom um, David, Livingston. Oh, sorry, Tom. Just you want to identify to be my last name for the two. Oh, uh, you're absolutely right. Tom Livingston has moved that we accept the minutes as uh, um, re uh, revised. So David? Yes. Aye. Uh, Dominique? Yay. <laughs> Tom Keegan? Yes, but please call me Todd. <laughs> we will call you Todd. Todd Keegan, um, Manny? Yes. Tom Livingston? Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, Kadeem Roberts? Aye. And I. So again, um, unanimously accepted. Um, any old business? Hearing none, moving to new business. Any new business? And our final item is our discussion item, which is um, to discuss and vote on the Norwalk Facilities Construction Commission sections 30-15 through 30-17. This was something that Tom Livingston was going to bring to our attention. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, this, this is not a vote. Um, if we had had a full meeting, we could have had more of a discussion about it. But I just wanted to get this on people's radar about this uh, committee and the idea of possibly abolishing it. Alan Lowe will come to the next meeting and talk about it more. We have a little more time. But just to give you like a 30 second overview because I know we don't have a lot of time. This commission was set up, I think, in 2003 uh, by Mayor Knopp in, in a totally different world where there's a lot of different construction projects going on. And the idea was to come up with a way of a central management, uh, central is maybe the wrong word, but as a, a, or a better management system to go oversee all these projects. It, it, um, and it's got uniform control over these projects, including Board of Education. A lot's changed like that. A whole process of reviewing these projects has changed, uh, mostly under the guidance of Alan. Uh, the way it works is, um, get, and we can go into the details of how it works. In essence, uh, he's bringing managers, he's having different experts come in at different points of time. And what's happened is because of the way things are managed, this commission simply adds another layer of bureaucracy because everything that's reviewed there simply 99% of the stuff reviewed there has to go up to the land use committee and then the council anyway. So it creates a, a, an unnecessary level of bureaucracy. And it also, quite frankly, makes it difficult to get members to serve on that commission because they see it as kind of a waste of time, quite frankly. Um, I can't tell you, I, I've been on this commission since I first got on the council. I can't tell you how many times we've had the council for lack of quorum. And that's one of the big impetus behind this move because it just, it's, it's not a real effective committee right now. And we can talk about Ms. Lorichella's comments and another point, I don't see keeping the committee just for uh, to promote environmental standards as a real reason to do it, but we can talk about that. I certainly support those standards, but I don't think that's the way to do it. So anyway, the long and short of this is, this is just the, the, the 30,000 foot overview to sort of get people start to think about this. Uh, as I said, Alan will come to the next meeting and talk about it in, in depth as to why he agrees that this is something that should no longer, uh, is no longer necessary. Or, um, and so anyway, uh, I can take questions now or in the future or next time, whatever. Anyway, thank you for the time. Great. Any thoughts before we, um, before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Oh, Alicia wants to speak. Just really quickly, I want to thank you guys for bearing with us as we are learning how to do this Zoom conferencing. Um, I heard Ms. Laricella's comments and I wanted to let everybody on the committee know that that was something that the staff also realized earlier today. We were able to rectify it to make it easier for people to be able to have a hyperlink to click to participate for the council meeting. Um, and we will be doing that for the other meetings going forward. We just didn't have time to fix it for this meeting, but did wanna let you know it's something we're aware of and we're working on to make it easier for um, the public to participate. Thanks, Alicia. Anything else before I ask for a motion for an adjournment? Motion to adjourn? Dominique. Second. All in favor? 
we can eye it. <laughs> Great. Aye. See you guys in uh, 15 minutes for the Common Council meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. And then, Brian, I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Thank Jessica. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Good. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you very much for doing our, our staff work. Stay safe. Take care. Brian, I'll Stay talk safe. to you in a few minutes. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe.